Hi, so now you understand a little bit about diodes and the operation and the forward bias characteristics, reverse bias characteristics. This will hopefully help you to understand the operation of a transistor. Now, transistors are fantastic things and they allow us to build amplifiers, effects units, you name it, you know, your, your smartphones, everything literally today in terms of electronics have has millions of transistors within them. So we are going to look at various circuits as we move forward. Uh, this is one of them. This is a, a tone booster. If you want to build this, you can build this in LT Spice to start with and then uh, build it onto VeraBoard or, or run a PCB. Very simple circuit. Consists of two transistors. So transistors in this circuit are um, dictated by these symbols here. So this is a transistor. This is a transistor here. And the, the reason why it's a tone circuit is because we have this arrangement here, which is filter. So we get filtered output. Um, so one part of the circuit is acting as a as an amplifier, um, and we're kind of we, we're using this transistor here as a as an output device for driving the uh, the output. Uh, if we look at a bit more complicated circuit here, we have a um, high class A B amplifier. Uh, so what we mean by A B, we'll we'll find out in due course. But we have a number of uh, transistors here. We've got transistor inputs here, here, here. And then we've got the, so this, effectively we can split this in half. We've got this, which is the uh, effect of the input voltage gain stage. And here we have what we call a push-pull power stage. Um, so it's important that we understand how these, how these transistors work or what a transistor is to start with. So a transistor, they come in all shapes and sizes. The building blocks of electronics really um, and they're often referred to as either field effect transistors or bipolar junction transistors they operate in in different ways um, we're going to look at those but initially we're going to look at this thing which is a bipolar junction transistor why is it called that well if we think back to uh, a diode here the symbol for a diode there uh, we have a, uh, a single uh, single device and if we remember this was the anode this was the cathode um, effectively we had the p-type um, doped silicon and the n-type so uh, doped silicon here in a transistor we'll find that effectively what we've got are are two of these devices uh, wired together or we can we can kind of begin to analyze the transistor in this way so in the transistor there, there will be um, three doped areas and they'll either be NPN or PNP so th this is why sometimes when you go and pick a transistor up if it's a bipolar junction transistor you either choose an NPN or a PNP so NPN junction or a PNP junction uh, a standard diode is a PN junction uh, so, so there you can begin to see the similarities between the two so here I've got an image here of, of, of kind of how you could represent a diode, uh, uh, a transistor internally. So here we've got the two back-to-back -back diodes. This will be forward bias. This will be forward bias direction. And this is dictated by this. So the reason why it's, this is called an NPN, if we look here, these are the, um, these are the N dot silicons uh, substrates and this is the p this is joined together so these are common so this is why this is called an npn uh, so you could consider n p n there now this terminal here is is uh, called the base terminal this terminal here is called the collector terminal and this terminal here is called the emitter terminal the reason why it's called a collector is because generally for an npn transistor we would connect this to our positive supply rail current would flow through and this will be connected either to a resistor or other components uh, but ordinarily to our uh, zero volts point the base is what we use to control the operation of the the transistor so we apply a control signal to the base which in turn allows this or, or, or changes the operation of the the transistor itself so the lecture materials they contain quite a lot of information about the intricacies of the currents that flow through 
uh, the transistor. So I'm going to go through the basics to help you understand the uh, the lecture notes themselves. So if we draw an NPN transistor like so, that's the symbol. So this is the collector, the emitter, and the base. Now, for a transistor, we say that current that flows down here, we call this the collector current. And the current that flows down there, we call the emitter current. So, and guess what? We call this the base current flowing in. Now, there's a relationship between the, these, uh, these currents. And the relationship is determined by the beta characteristic of this transistor. Now, what's really cool about these transistor devices is that this is what we call a current controlled device. If we put in a, a base current here, we will get a collector current that is proportional to the beta characteristic of the, the transistor. So we can say that IC is equal to beta times the IB. Now, typically for a transistor, NPN transistor, you might see these beta characteristics, you know, they can be 400, 500 uh, size and magnitude. For power transistors, you usually see quite low betas. So for power applications, we might see 10 to 40 for the beta. But for voltage gain applications, you might see, you know, 200 plus. So typically in the, the, the transistors we'll be using in the uh, LT Spice Labs, betas are uh, around uh, 200 or so. So what this means is if you put in a very small uh, beta current, we can get much larger uh, collector currents through. Now the relationship between the IC and IB uh, with re with respect to IE, the IE is going to be this current added to this current. If you think about Kirchhoff's current laws, it's simply IC plus IB. And that's important when we start to look at things like the input impedance of these of these transistors.